Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're taking a look at how the Ryzen 7 5700X compares to the Ryzen 5 5600 for gaming. And as usual, I'm doing this because many of you requested the comparison. Makes sense though, if you're looking at upgrading from an older Ryzen processor or even building a new PC, the two most attractive AMD options right now for gamers would be the Ryzen 5 5600 for around $200 US or the Ryzen 7 5700X for around $300 US. Now, a quick and simple cost per core calculation will tell you that the 5700X is coming in at a 13% price premium, resulting in a 50% price hike overall. So is it worth it? And at what point should gamers consider the 5700X over the 5600? I'm gonna do my best to answer those questions and more. So let's start with the test system specs and then we'll jump into the results and break it all down. For this one, we've got a 24 game benchmark covering the 1080p and 1440p resolutions using both the Radeon RX 6950 XT and 6600 XT with SAM enabled. The motherboard used for all of this testing is the old MSI B350 Tomahawk using the latest BIOS revision based on the AGISA 1.2.0.7 microcode, which enables resizable BIOS support along with support for Ryzen 5000 series processors. Please note though, as shown previously, performance is within a few percentage of what you would see using the latest and greatest X570 motherboards. Then finally, we have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL14 dual rank dual channel memory, and this same configuration was used for testing all Ryzen processors. So with those details out of the way, let's go over about a dozen of the games tested, and then we'll take a look at the 24 game average, but please note all 24 graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with Fortnite using competitive quality settings, we find the 5700X offers a slight performance advantage, though I wouldn't be too quick to chalk that one up to the fact that we're comparing six versus eight cores. We're only talking about a four to 5% performance difference, and the 5700X does typically clock 5% higher than the 5600. So I'd say this is where the bulk of the performance discrepancy comes from, which makes sense given Fortnite isn't a heavy core user. And it's a similar story when testing ACC. We're looking at a four to 6% difference between these two CPUs. And with the minimum quality settings, the game is heavily CPU bound, particularly at 1080p. So again, the clock speed advantage of the 5700X is key to the performance discrepancy seen here. But with both being unlocked CPUs, you should be able to achieve the same level of performance by simply overclocking. Now, out of the 24 games benchmarked, the only title to show more than about a 10% margin between these two CPUs was Call of Duty Vanguard. Here, the 5700X was up to 25% faster when compared with the 6950XT, and still 22% faster at 1440p, though the 1% lows were similar, leading to an indistinguishable experience overall. Now, when using the 6950XT at 1080p, CPU usage with the Ryzen 5 5600 never dipped below 80% in our testing generally hovering around 90 to 95%. Despite that though, frame time performance was excellent with no stuttering, but with more headroom, the 5700X was able to push frame rates higher. So this is an example where the two extra cores did result in significantly more performance, though not to a degree anyone would notice given the level of performance the 5600 already enables. Cyberpunk 2077 does lean on the CPU quite heavily, Though the same is also true of the GPU, and in fact, it's typically the graphics side of things where performance is most limited in this title. Still, at 1080p using the 6950XT, we did find that 1% lows were 10% stronger with the 5700X, and that margin does go beyond the 5% clock speed advantage. Still, the experience with the 5600 was virtually indistinguishable here. Moving on, we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive, a game that I haven't included in our benchmarks for about three to four videos now, and that's led to a lot of requests to add it back. So here it is. But as usual, the data is very uninteresting, or at least it is to me. Don't get me wrong, I love competitive shooters, but with modern CPUs and GPUs able to push past 300 FPS, it's hard to say how relevant this game is for testing modern hardware. Whatever the case though, the 5600 and 5700X are the primary system bottleneck in this test, with the 6600 XT and 6950 XT delivering the same level of performance. There's also only a 4% margin between the two CPUs, so again, this can be put down to the difference in clock speed. Rainbow Six Extraction is another competitive shooter, but this one is entirely GPU bound using either the 5600 or 5700X, even with the 6950 XT. We're using the second highest quality preset for testing, but even so, the 6950XT was good for over 300 FPS at 1080p, so for most of you, that's likely going to be more than enough performance. 
Next, we have F1 2021, which is another game that plays at hundreds of frames per second using the latest and greatest hardware, though it's not nearly as CPU limited as CSGO. The 5600 and 5700X were neck and neck with the RX 6600 XT, and then with the 6950 XT, we see up to a 6% margin favoring the 8-core processor, but again, that's mostly down to the clock speed advantage. Forza Horizon 5 is not a heavy CPU user, so these results are pretty well as expected. Basically, the exact same level of performance is seen using either the 5600 or 5700X, and with the Radeon RX 6600 XT, the game is entirely GPU limited. Hitman 3 is far more CPU demanding than Forza Horizon 5, but even so, here we're still entirely GPU limited with the 6600 XT. The game does start to become ever so slightly CPU limited with the 6950 XT at 1080p, but we're still only talking about a 5% advantage for the 5700X. Moving on to the Rift Breaker, which can be a very CPU demanding game. Here the 5700X was up to 21% faster than the 5600, seen when looking at the 1% lows with the 6950 XT at 1080p, though we only saw a mild 10% uplift for the average frame rate. Those margins were heavily reduced at 1440p, and then we see no difference with the 6600 XT. The last game that we're going to look at the individual data for is Watch Dogs Legion, and this is a very demanding game on both the CPU and GPU. Here we're using slightly dialed down quality settings, but even so, we're limited to just over 100 FPS at 1080p with the 6950 XT using either CPU. The 5700X was 10 to 11% faster when CPU bound in our testing, so those extra cores are helping to slightly improve performance here beyond just the 5% increase in frequency. Now, across the 24 games tested, this is how the average data looks. For those of you running extreme high-end GPUs, such as the Radeon RX 6950 XT, at low resolutions like 1080p, we're looking at no more than a 5% performance advantage for the Ryzen 7 5700X over the Ryzen 5 5600, so overall it mostly came down to that difference in clock frequency. The margin was slightly reduced to 4% at 1440p, so overall a very little difference between the 6 and 8 core Zen 3 processors. And then of course, if you are using a slower GPU, something more mid-range like the Radeon RX 6600 XT, for the most part, there's going to be no performance difference to speak of. Now, here's a look at the Radeon RX 6950 XT margins at 1080p. The 5700 X was up to 25% faster, seen in Call of Duty Vanguard, which can be considered an outlier in our testing, as margins were typically more like 5%. In fact, there were just five examples where the margin exceeded that of the clock frequency discrepancy between these two CPUs, those titles being the Rift Breaker, Watch Dogs Legion, Death Stranding, Far Cry 6, and again, Call of Duty Vanguard. Then, with the Radeon RX 6600 XT, the results get a bit mixed around as games like Call of Duty Vanguard become mostly GPU bound. Games where that wasn't the case, though, include Far Cry 6, ACC, and Fortnite, with the rest of the margins within 5%. So, as expected, for the most part, there is very little difference between the Ryzen 5 5600 and Ryzen 7 5700X for gamers. This probably won't be news to many of you, as this has been well known for quite some time now, as similar comparisons have been made using the 5600X and 5800X. In fact, back in February of last year, I created a Zen 3 GPU scaling video comparing the 5600X, 5800X, 5900X, and the 5950X using a range of games, quality settings, and of course, graphics cards. The margins seen back then with the RTX 3090 were similar to what's seen here today, using the 6950 XT with a wider range of games, many of which are quite new. That being the case, should you spend the extra $100 US on the Ryzen 7 5700X? Well, of course, that all depends, and on quite a few things for that matter. It depends on the games you play, how you play them, and how likely you think it is that future games will require the extra processing power the additional cores of the 5700X offer. As it stands right now, there's really only a handful of games where you can justify purchasing the 5700X, beyond the fact that, well, you can just afford it and you want it, which of course is perfectly fine. But if you're looking for examples of games that clearly justify buying an 8-core Zen 3 processor over a 6-core model, you're going to really struggle to come up with many. So in short, if you're after current generation performance, but want to spend as little money as possible, the Ryzen 5 5600 is going to make the most sense. Save the $100 US now and put that towards an upgrade in the future when you can clearly tell the difference. Having said that, if you have the cash to splash now and you don't want to risk running into any performance-related issues, 
then the 5700X for $300 US is certainly a great option. It's also not a bad idea for those of you playing demanding multiplayer titles, think Call of Duty Warzone for example, though I am aware there are many of you who report playing Warzone just fine with something like the 5600X, but these multiplayer games are where parts like the 5700X will start to make sense for gamers. Though keep in mind you will need to be using lower quality settings or an extremely high end GPU in order to shift the performance limitations onto the CPU even in those demanding multiplayer titles. Of course, if you also use your PC for tackling core heavy productivity workloads then the choice will likely become much easier. I'd assume for that sort of user the 5700X or perhaps even the 5900X would be more what you'd be looking at. For gamers on a budget though, the Ryzen 5 5600 is a great option, especially if you can get one for down around $170 US, which they have been selling for over the past few weeks. It's also worth noting that if you're not just upgrading from an older Ryzen processor, so you're conducting an entire platform upgrade or perhaps even just building an entirely new PC, the value equation is more favorable for the 5700X. That said, at some point you do need to draw a line in the sand, and this is something I see some tech reviewers struggling with. I often see the argument made that although a part like the 5700X is 50% more expensive, if you're building an entire PC which might cost $1200 US with the 5600, increasing that budget to $1300 US to accommodate the 5700X is only an 8% increase. And well, that's entirely true. But if you apply that logic every step of the way, you end up with more memory, storage, a better power supply, the next tier in GPU performance, and so on, and before long that $1200 US budget blows out to $2200 US. Of course if you can't afford to do that then great, but you're not exactly looking for sound tech advice, you're just buying the best thing you can afford, which again is fine, and many people do shop that way. But if you're more interested in getting the most bang for your buck now, then the Ryzen 5 5600 would be the smarter choice. I also doubt that the extra 33% processing power that the 5700X offers is going to make a noticeable difference for gamers within the realistic lifespan of these two products, outside of a few outliers. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like, subscribe for more content. I'll have a few more of these comparisons coming up. I think I might do the 5700X versus 12700F next. I think that'd be a pretty cool comparison. So yeah, make sure you subscribe for that one because it will be coming up at some point in the near future. And of course we have lots of other content and. I think it's Q&A week next week, so there'll be Q&As on the main channel. And if you want to get more hardware unbox goodness, then we do have Float Plane Patreon. Either one of those will give you access to more Q&A stuff, behind the scenes content. Uh, we have an exclusive Discord server for hardware unbox members, and we do a monthly live stream each month. Tim and I get together and do that, so it's always a lot of fun. Anyway, if you want to check that out, feel free. If not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.